at the Love 30 stage, we, we had a very long rally, which Illis will get, and it was a very important point, enabled Solomon to keep his head just in the lead at 3-2. Actually, when one looks at the set in its entirety, really Solomon has been somewhat unfortunate. He could so easily be five love up. In the second game, he had love 40 on McEnroe's serve. The fourth game, he had 15-40. On both occasions, McEnroe managed to hang on to his serve. But can, he, can Solomon break McEnroe's serve this time? So the score, 2-3, McEnroe's serve. Thirty love. Sixteen stroke rally before uh, Solomon had the chance to put away the easy forehand volley. Shot. Forty thirty. Certainly, McEnroe paid the penalty there for a bad length serve coming in behind it. A little smothering Solomon forehand that. Yes.
Advantage Solomon. Now, this really is a big point. Let's see how the champion plays this one. Break point against him. And he's 2-3 behind in this set. Just mm, unlucky. Advantage McEnroe. Game to McEnroe. Well, Paul ruled, and it was an ace for McEnroe. Three games all. His fourth of the match. Just when he needed to uh, deliver a couple of real cracking serves, he did so. He'd been on court for just over an hour and a half, and that's a very long time for a set of 6-3 and three all in the second set. Now we're going to see some fireworks from Mahinro in the seventh game. Very, very rarely do you see uh, McEnroe caught like that, hesitating whether to play a low volley or half volley. Most unusual. Perhaps it shows the state of his mind in this match. 15 all. Fourteen, fifteen. First service. One fault. One fault. One fault called. Late call. Solomon surprised. Line judge called a fault, but late. One fault. So the score is 40-15, one fault.
game yes. song. Solomon leads by four games to three. Well, McEnroe there uh, let Solomon get ahead on his serve. But we saw in that game how difficult it can be to play his opponent, Solomon. Because here we see Solomon serving. McEnroe returns, is into the net, and he's into the double-handed. He thought the ball was going down the line, but, but Solomon slipped it across court. That moment's hesitation by McEnroe caused him to allow Solomon to make the winner. And that has been a little bit the case in this match, that McEnroe has clearly been indecisive. He's not been quite too sure what to do. He's been watching Solomon a little bit instead of watching his own ball and going for his own game. He's been trying to play Solomon's game. <laughs> Nevertheless, he's uh, still in contention in this set. I suspect he must consider himself very lucky to be still in contention in this set. Each of his service games he's been break point down on all three. So it's 3-4. Solomon is out eager to play. I suppose his opponent Solomon senses that, he, that McEnroe may be getting a little bit weary. And to those ends he's been trying to keep the, the rallies as long as possible. McEnroe to serve. He's bending, showing signs of a little bit of stiffness, maybe. Serving. 3 4. Utterly uncharacteristic that. First service in, and his uh, low forehand volley. Never bent his knees, never played it he normally does, usually one of the safest of the uh, volleys behind the service. Fifteen all. chance 30 15 well what a chance Solomon had there he hit such a glorious forehand attacking uh, shot and then missed that comparatively easy back and he knows it of course Thirty fifteen. Fifteen. Well, above the court there, there are the television lights and there are all sorts of um, display flags and a lot of stuff up there. And second time, Solomon has been unfortunate enough to get them. Forty fifteen. Let. First service. Game to McEnroe. Four games all. Although no real fireworks from McEnroe then, certainly uh, a more controlled, thoughtful game. One or two points there, he played uh, 
real understanding of where his opponent was about to run to and then put it in the opposite place, wrong footed him a couple of times. So four or second set. That should give McEnroe a lot of heart. Fine backhand cross pass on the run. Love 30. Love 40. Rather loose reply from Solomon there. That was a gift point indeed for McEnroe and coming just at the right moment for him. Great points here. Game to McEnroe. McEnroe leads by five games to four. Well, Mark, from the moment the uh, McEnroe made that first running pass to win the first point of this game, he really uh, had a succession of errors from his opponent. So it may be that um, Solomon is beginning to feel the pace a bit. Well, certainly that was a very key game. It's a break serve at this stage in the set. That means that McEnroe now has the enviable uh, situation of serving for the set but that first point so often the first point of a of a game is vital and uh, it was in fact a well contested point with shots being played from all parts of the court and as we can see both of the players are, are jockeying for position waiting for the opportunity to open up the court there we're seeing the slow balls to the backhands waiting for the opportunity to there Solomon moves across to hit a hard forehand to take McEnroe out of position but McEnroe recovers very very quickly both players are very fast to recover and still fencing from the back of the court the short ball oh but Solomon still back both players still in the back court and the short ball comes and Solomon decides to come into the net but McEnroe hits a classic topspin backhand for a winner. Fine shot indeed. And as I say, I think that was instrumental in him breaking serve. And this gives him the chance in the second set should he hold this service game. It's in, or it hasn't been called. I, I saw the ball. Quiet, please. Quiet, please, Eddie. The ball, I saw the ball out from here. The score is 15 love. Now, the ball was called out according to the umpire. Every goddamn no, call. I saw the other the way against me since I've been here this week. Not one time I saw the ball. Mr. Solomon, I saw the ball. The ball was out. Not one time did you change the ball in my favor the whole week. I'm just telling you that. I just want you to know that, okay? If he can't see that ball, then he can't see anything. That's the slowest shot of all time. Well, I'm sure you heard that. Solomon saying if the linesman couldn't see that ball, then he can't see anything. But the umpire in the chair, Mike Lowe, confirms that the call was out.
So it's 15 love. Thirty love. Thirty love just when he needed it, his fifth ace. Forty love. So three set points for two sets to love lead, Mahinra. So that's the score, 6-3-6-4, in an hour and uh, 50 minutes. And McEnroe coming through just at the right moment there. Two love games, a break of service, and then he held his own to love. Quiet, please, ladies and gentlemen. Third set, Solomon to serve. So a long way now for Mr. Solomon to go if he's to win this final. He's got to win three straight sets. Solomon. First game, first set. Let me just ask, me just ask John Barrett an interesting question here. Now, from Solomon's point of view, he's two sets of love down in this best of five set match. Uh, he's not really an attacking player, although he's becoming a better one. I'm just wondering whether he'll decide to play this as an all-out match of looping, keeping the ball going, trying to tire his opponent out in five sets. Well, only Solomon knows how strong he's feeling. They've been uh, on court a very long time already for just two sets. And I made a note during the course of that last uh, set that they've had nine deuce games, which is a high percentage and uh, I think if he feels that his legs are strong enough, he is, in fact, using the right tactics because he should really have won that last set. Three times he had a chance to break the McEnroe serve. He was a little bit unlucky on a couple of backhand returns, which he rifled across McEnroe. They'd, had they been winners, he would have achieved break, break of serve twice. And I think he's got the right tactics, but he's just not quite making that final point. 
across McEnroe's in a fight that he perhaps didn't expect. He's having to work so hard. It so much reminds me of last year's final when he dropped the first set to Tim Gullickson. Another player was having an inspired day and rifling the ball off the ground, particularly on service return. Another thing he'll want to do is to find his first serve. It's deserted him this afternoon. Serving with the new balls, the second game of this third set. That one. Love to see. Fifteen over. Fourteen, fifteen. One game more. Love 30.
Gov 40. Fifteen forty. James McNamara. McEnroe leads by two games to one. Well, McEnroe secures the break there that uh, he wanted, and it was noticeable in that game that he quickened the pace of the game up. He was very quick to get into the net. He was hitting the ball a little bit harder. He quite clearly did not want to get into long rallies, which I'm sure, as was pointed out before, his opponent really would like to have long rallies. Having played uh, Solomon on many occasions, one of the great difficulties about playing him is that A, the rallies are very long, B, that you seem to have to cover very much more court than you do with other opponents. And it is terribly fatiguing to play against him. And invariably what happens is that you find that you've played one very long rally and you're still not prepared physically, physically recovered to play the next rally. And that's a situation which I'm sure that uh, McEnroe does not want to get into. He does not want to be fatigued. Because that the fatigue element is quite clearly the only area of weakness that I think he has against his opponent. Doing, still doing a lot of stretching of the thighs. He's clearly feeling the strain of having to move around the court so much. Serving with a service break, 2-1 and two sets to love. Fifteen love. Thirty love. Thirty fifteen. Four hand winner. Forty fifteen. Let's first.
first service. First service. Game to McEnroe. <laughs> McEnroe leads by three games to one. Taking three games in a row, he was one love down in this third set. Then he had a break of serve, so he looks very much on top now. Quiet, please, ladies and gentlemen. And I must say he started that game with a serve and volley tactic that was uh, quite immaculate the first two points, right back into his best style. Love. Well, normally he'd expect to make that when uh, playing well, I'm sure. Half court ball, waist high, top to backhand. Thirty love. Fourteen, fifteen. McEnroe leads by three games to two. Well, Solomon is really a, a tenacious competitor, and we know full well that he's the sort of player who will be out there even an, as long as it takes to win this match, even if he had to be out there tomorrow, he would be prepared to be out there still fighting it out. And here he is, 3-1 down, and he's serving. And McEnroe returning. And as we can see, both players again in the backcourt, waiting for the opportunity to emerge. There goes the moon ball, the change the pace of... Of the, of the ball there from Solomon. And a superb cross-court backhand by McEnroe opens up the court, but it also opens up the court for Solomon to make a winning forehand shot. And Solomon out very quickly, indicating that he's eager, strong, not showing any signs of fatigue. And the, the one thing he wants to do is to break McEnroe's serve. McEnroe to serve with a service break. 
three, two, third set. Two sets to love. Fifteen love. McEnroe not looking too happy on his low wallers there. Querying the service. Whatever he is, he's lost the point. It's 30 15. It's 15 15 30. It's when McEnroe is in full cry like that behind his service that he really is such an entertaining and such an effective player. Solomon, five foot six, really having to jump about a foot off the ground to take that ball somewhere near the top of the bounce. But knew he had to take it early if he was going to make his winner. What's going on here? Perspiration? Yes. leading 3-2, Deuce, third set, and by two sets to love. Advantage, Solomon. An effective return of service brings Solomon to the chance of getting even in this uh, third set. Break point. Advantage, Solomon. 
two games all. We're in a strong burst of cheering for uh, Solomon as he wins that game, breaks the serve to make it three all. Part, and he's still in the match. Thirty love. Forty love. James Solomon. Solomon leads by four games to three. Well, Harold Solomon in this match has served uh, two aces, and I'm sure that's as many aces as he's served perhaps in the last two years. He really is now going through an inspired patch played the last two games extremely well and I think what happened was there was a he sensed a lack of concentration or letting go of the match by McEnroe and he was very very quick to jump in there and seize the opportunity to get himself back into the lead his opponent on the other hand McEnroe uh, seems at this stage to be getting very edgy any ball that's near to the line he seems to be wanting to question and in actual fact in this match there have been an awful lot of balls very near the line and I wouldn't envy being a linesman under any circumstances the ball skids a great deal when it bounces and sometimes it's very difficult to pinpoint where it's exactly bounced Four, three, four. I can row two sets up. Serving. Fifteen love. Forty love. James McEnroe. Four games all. 7 aces so far in the match from uh, McEnroe, but he won't regard this as one of his best serving days, I'm quite sure. So four, four off. That's it. Next! Love 15. 
15 all. Really, that was a very, very close one. A little unlucky. Wonderful play. Thirty all. And Mr. Solomon really didn't know where he was in that rally, or not very often. Wrong footed off balance and completely at sea. Forty thirty. Game Solomon. <laughs> Solomon leads by five games to four. With this final, now in its third set, we will be staying with this match here at Wembley final of this year's championship. John McEnroe will be defending his title. Well, Solomon continues to keep his nose in front. I must admit, uh, I think he's behaved particularly well in this match. I think there have been a lot of bo balls that have bounced very close to the lines and the decisions have gone against him. And it's interesting that he's a player in the past, particularly at Wembley, who's not been very well received. He's had considerable emotional outbursts on the court, but it's an area of his game and personality that he's paid a great deal of attention to, and is noticeable in every way, the way he conducts his life, that his whole attitude has changed, and he is very much more a positive person. So, let's see if uh, his newfound positivism can uh, secure a break of serve at this point, because this will give him the third set. Love. This is just where Solomon really can't afford to make any unforced errors if he's to take this set. Thirty love. Good. 30, yes, it was good. It was dangerously close to the outside edge of the line, but he made it.
30 well, that was an inspired return pass if ever I saw one. So five, uh, four, five, thirty all. That's it. Here's a possible chance. Solomon, he gets a bad link, second service. Advantage, McEnroe. Another good change of direction on the part of uh, the service of McEnroe's. Five games all. Well, McEnroe gets out of trouble with that service. He really hasn't had a happy serving day today, but at the end of that uh, game, when it was deuce, he got a serve in, and then he serves his ace, make it five all. Eight aces in all. Five all, then. Solomon serving. Now that was really magical touch and skill and speed. Everything there from McEnroe. Wonderful control off a really difficult drop shot. Eight If McEnroe wins this point with a winning shot, it'll be quite his best game of the match so far. Three points so far, he's won with winning shots. Six games to five. Well, Mark, the perfect game, wasn't it? Four winners. Well, there we saw why he's the champion that he is. He played, as you say, four magnificent points, of which, again, the first point of that game was a key point. We have Harold Solomon to serve. Serves to the backhand of McEnroe. And again, both players will play from the back of the court, but no, Solomon comes into the net, and it's a chip cross court, and a fine drop shot by Solomon, but 
McEnroe read it with great anticipation. He managed to sprint up the court and play a beautiful winner. A remarkable shot, truly remarkable shot, which had everyone surprised. And from there on, he went on to play three more spectacular points, taking the net away from Solomon with complete authority. And those last four points with McEnroe in the position of serving for the match at 6-5. Well, that's an unfortunate mishap for uh, McEnroe. He, yeah, with his temper tantrums, it caused the frame to break. So he's now trying to sort out a, a new racket to his liking. It's not a good time for that sort of situation to happen because rackets do vary even though they're perfectly balanced. Their playing qualities differ, so it's uh, not a good time psychologically to have to change one's racket when one's serving for the match. whether Solomon will get heart from that situation. Love 15. Fifteen all. Thirty fifteen. At the moment to get a net cord. Heavy service gives Nacking Row two championship points. Yeah. McEnroe wins by three sets to love, 6-3, 6-4, five. So McEnroe comes through to win the championship for the second time, 6-3, 6-4, 7-5, two hours and 30 minutes of play. Not a distinguished final, but I must say that uh, McEnroe has proved what all great champions have proved in the past. They can win big titles when they're not playing at their very best. And I must say, for Solomon, he put up a magnificent display. He really had, Solomon really had uh, the American Open champion McEnroe really having to think tactically and psychologically and in every way. And it's a long time since we saw 
Long time since we saw McEnroe so uh, worried. And coming on to court for the uh, presentation. We have Mr. Len Owen and Mr. Stuart Cameron, the Deputy Chairman of Benson and Hedges. And so waiting to present the trophy and the replica and the checks. for the second year running, the defending champion, the number one seed from the United States, John McEnroe. So John Ren McEnroe takes that check, a bigger check than last time. He takes the trophy that already has the names of Borg on it and Connors, and now his own name for the second time will be engraved on there. And a very welcome drink he's having there too being adorned with the flowers that have uh, made the Wembley Arena look so lovely this week. Two, three, ladies and gentlemen, it, it takes two to make a good match, and we have seen a good match, and surely he's earned his check for £8,620, the runner-up, Harold Solomon. And a tremendous cheer for the little man who has played so well this week. 8,620 pounds, the runner-up prize, which isn't at all bad. <laughs> he doesn't get a replica, but he's trying to get the lid there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 8,700 of you have been lucky enough to be here to see this live this afternoon. Those who couldn't have watched it on BBC Two, and as ever, hosting the programme and coming on court now to talk to the players, David Vine. John, congratulations again. Hello. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, we've got him there. Yes, we are. John, many congratulations. Second time I've walked out here to uh, say congratulations in two years to you. The last time you said you were going to give the check to your father. What happened to this one? Give it to my mother this time. <laughs> what happened for the third time? Uh, I keep the third one. <laughs> John, I think that was possibly uh, harder than you might have imagined. I know you've played this man before and lost him, but my goodness, you had to fight, especially in that second Well, round. it's no fun playing him, I can assure you that. But, uh, I mean, you know, when you go out there, especially three out of five sets, you know you're going to have to work hard. I mean, it was three sets, and it took two hours and 40 minutes. So uh, you know that you're in for a tough battle. And uh, I thought I was going pretty good, and then I had to break in third. When I lost that, I was, you know, I was really pressing, because I knew if I lost the third, it would be, you know, at least an hour longer, and you're going to get start getting tired after a while. You seem to possibly at the start of the match not to be playing your own game, almost like you're being lulled in a Harold's game. Is this a problem? Well, I mean, I wanted to get a good start because I knew it was really important to win the first set because I didn't want to get behind a set or two against him and have to come back in five sets. So, you know, I was really pressing in the beginning trying to... I, I wasn't relaxing. I was trying to go for too much too early, and I finally settled down after a while. He does get an awful lot back, doesn't he? Too many. <laughs> Harold, what about your own feelings? That second set, you must have thought, I've got a big chance here. Had a lot of opportunities, 15-40, uh, love 40, love 30, I think, three games, and I didn't break at all. He played really good points, came up with big serves. Just played the big points better than I did, is what it amounted to. I think I'm right in saying you've beaten him on two previous occasions, haven't you? Well, I got him when he was a junior, and uh, <laughs> both times I've beaten him there on my surface on clay, so, uh, you know. I should think those, <laughs> those legs are going to be a little tired tonight, aren't they? Well, it's not too bad. I, uh, I played two weeks ago a final against Berezuti. It was about four and a half hours, so th oh. this one's not too bad. Oh, it's just a little run around. Yeah, it's just a little warm-up. <laughs> Are you going to come to Wimbledon this year? Yeah. <laughs> Next year. You are. First time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'd love, love to see you there, and they made a lot of friends here. John, I think uh, you're possibly going to the Brighton next week, are you, to watch the ladies' tournament? No, unfortunately not. You're I'm, not going going to, I'm going to Italy tomorrow. Oh, you're not going to make it? No, I'm sorry. Anyway. Next year. Next year. Many yeah. congratulations here. The champion yet again with a check. This time it goes to his mum, and maybe next time you keep it for yourself. Yeah, you thank you. John McEnroe, the champion. So...
McEnroe takes the title and the check, and he takes a lot of confidence back to America, ready for his next big affair against Italy in the defense of the Davis Cup. So he ought to be really a very happy man.